Hello, Harry here, and welcome or welcome back to Jog On, a podcast about the joy of running and adventure. If you're a regular listener, you may have noticed we had a slight break in the episodes. This was to focus attention on both training and producing the Jog On videos for the YouTube channel. It paid off, as we've seen the audience rise to over 2,000 subscribers, as well as more Jog On running tops being purchased to support the channel. So, if you're one of them, thank you. Remember, you can find all things at the central hub of Jog On, thisisjogon.com. It's good to be back. Now, on to the episode. I was recently contacted by an audience member, Chris Usher, who bought a jog on top and in the process told me a little more about his running journey. This led to an invitation to speak to me on the podcast, which he accepted. What I've learned is that the more I run, the easier it becomes. Chris is not like many of the other guests we've had. Running was not something that came to him early nor easily. I think I was quite allergic to sport. But nonetheless, he discovered running to be a great tool and talked to me about his ongoing relationship with it. Even if it is just a short 5k where I've absolutely, you know, crashed it, I've walked half of it, I've just felt awful. At the end of it, I always feel so much better. It was great to record this conversation with Chris and marvellous to be releasing a new Jog On podcast episode again. There's a purity with running that actually, yes, you need some equipment, but it's free to go out and run on the trails. It's free to run wherever you want. So please, welcome to Jog On, Chris Usher. A lot of people come on and people have spoken to me on this podcast and running has been their whole life running they've you know they ran at school and they did the cross country and then and I myself am, am guilty of one of these sort of stories of just like I've always run I always loved it blah 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 and it almost gets to a point where it's a bit like okay running 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 your situation's yep. a little different and it's quite interesting because you said to me when we had a, a brief catch up before that you actually didn't start running until a little bit later you're still fairly young in your life as it is but you didn't run at school um Talk me through at school itself. Were you were you interested in sport at all, or was it just something that never came up? Were you just not a sporty person? Yeah, so I think um, I've heard somebody else describe it in a similar way. I think I was quite allergic to sport. Mm. Um, you know, I would do a lot of things to try and get out of PE each week, whether that would be you know doing some sort of other um, curricular activity. I was not interested in sport at all, and you'd be more likely to find me, you know. Um, in the IT studio, you know, doing doing some IT work. I just never really, it never really crossed my mind. I always looked up to the sporty guys and um, sporty girls and thought, you know, I wish that was me, but actually I just didn't have that desire to go and play sport or to go, kind of go and um, enjoy doing that. I think my earliest memory of sort of cross country at school, mm. um, and I must admit when I did race in one cross country race in secondary school, and I I did quite well. Um, I think I came second or third place, but I thought, actually, do you know what? I'm quite good at this speed work. You know, I was quick. You know, it wasn't really until I got to sort of maybe university, like a lot of us, you know, we, we put on a bit of weight and we realised maybe I need to go and do something about this. So I actually sort of discovered that love of running, I guess. Do you think at school it's partly uh, an identity thing as well because we get sort of uh, pigeonholed a little bit into groups and if you're like an IT person you're mm. not you're not really like a, a jock as they would say in America you're not like a sporty person or is it just a, is it just a thing when you're a kid that just you don't have the self confidence to go do you know what I'm just going to put myself out there and, and try it do you think you were possibly even better than you maybe you realise like you did have an ability but you never really explored it yeah possibly to pick up on what you were saying there I think identity was a massive thing. Um, I think back then I was very shy, whereas now I would describe myself as a balance of introvert and an extrovert. Back then I was def- definitely introverted um, and I wouldn't put myself out there in terms of sport. I would, if I had to do PE, I would just get it done. It wasn't an enjoyable process. Yeah, I think the identity thing is is big. And as we all know, there's a lot of people who um, are naturally sporty from a young age. Yeah, that just wasn't me, to be honest. And And you could say that's a regret you can't change your personality and that's you know that's what happened yeah it's interesting it's funny uh, on a side note just on that subject is that um i think sometimes i've been mislabeled in the past as being like a sporty person because of mm-hmm. doing this and the, when the reality is i don't really play or do any sport with the exception yeah. of the activity of running which there's a debate out there as to whether it's even a sport it's such a natural just movement that we do i had this weird experience where it was like everything you've just said with the exception that for I, I did push myself into running more and the cross and found success in cross country and then bounce off more of it so almost like with every sport except for running I can completely relate to what you're saying because I also was like you know would just get on the rugby pitch play whatever and then and then go again 
it's interesting you talk about the um the introversy and and being a, a bit of an introvert do you think that just comes with just getting older you naturally come out of that a bit and become a nicer balance or is it sort of do you take action to be like i need to get out there a bit more i need to meet more people like how much is yeah, a conscious yeah. decision how much is just getting older yeah so i think when i started university i kind of had to make a bit of a decision with how i was you know and do i continue being introverted or do i be brave and put myself out there a little bit um and i went to the university of lincoln yeah for my first year i must admit and be honest that i i had a flat by myself because I, I that was just how i wanted to live you know oh, wow. a lot of people obviously were going off being in a household of six or a flat of six and i just i just knew from my first year i had to kind of just create my own boundaries and create my own space after a while i um became a member of of the uh, Christian Union, so part of a sort of wider network of Christians who come to university, be together and to be part of churches in, in the UK. So I, I met um, what would then become some of my best friends, my housemates in year two and three at the Christian Union. And from then, that sort of journey of becoming sort of more extroverted and more sociable just kind of came out from that. You know, I spent that year on my own, but I would be inviting people over to hang out and stuff. And yeah. and then from then, I think it was just a personality change. I think it was forced on by university because I just thought there's an opportunity here. How can I get involved in things? And I ended up being the president of the Christian Union for, for a year oh, yeah. as well, which, you know, if I look back 10 years ago, that kid that didn't enjoy sport or you know, was really quite introverted. I would never have dreamed of becoming the Christian Union president. I'd be like, you know, that's definitely yeah. not me. But I think there's always there's always a change. There's a change of everybody changes, don't they? We all change in our personalities. And I'm very thankful that that happened to me personally. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely a journey, just like running for us. You know, it's a, it's a journey and we're always changing and we're learning new things. And it's interesting. Yeah, it's funny because you and I attended university at the exact same years. I think you went from uh, Lincoln from 2011 to 2014. I was at Portsmouth right, from 2011 yeah. to 2014. I sort of joined the athletics club and became a huge part of that um, along some other clubs but athletics was the big one and then yeah, um, yeah. I never became president and a friend a good friend of mine became president because I didn't want that much responsibility but I became the captain um, <laughs> by the third year and it was uh, nice. amazing but and, and I think sometimes people who uh, haven't been to university or, or an experience like that um, sometimes might wonder why people reflect on university so favorably and they have such positive memories and mm -hmm. I think for a lot of people even I went through it and I was a, I went in quite a confident person and I'd done a, a year traveling and stuff and I still found it this whole kind of like slightly awakening experience but I imagine for someone like yourself and certainly people that I knew at Portsmouth to, I saw them from the moment they entered to when they left like it was like a different person it was it was like a mm. really really was like a, a transformative process it was like this almost without becoming too biblical it was almost an, a, an awakening uh, within themselves yeah, because yeah, they just yeah. completely just opened up to this whole world and so so I think you, you're right it's, it's addressing that kind of balance of you're sort of a little bit forced that your arms kind of twisted into like I literally just have to start meeting some new people and all this and yeah and, and that, no, that's that's really fascinating. So, does the running? Do you find the running at university? When when does this happen? What's your first experience of? Oh, running's a thing. How can I explore this more? It's difficult to place, I think, because I alluded to earlier the fact that um, as many of us do at university, we we eat too many takeaways. We you know go to the pub too many times, and we put on a bit of weight. And for me, that happened. But I think actually it came about mainly probably through park run actually. Um, so Lincoln Park Run. Uh, which has been going on for a long time. I used to go to that most Saturday mornings. Yeah. Um, great. It's a great 5K course, actually. It's in a local park in Lincoln. It's really flat. You can get some really good times on it. So that was one way. And then I just found that I needed to get out and do something. I joined the, the university gym and I went there, you know, for a few months, but I just found it a bit boring. You know, I sort of remember going on the treadmill and running and thinking, well, this is great. I can watch BBC News or some documentaries, but it doesn't it, it didn't have the same effect as going for a run. So I guess it was in a response to, you know, weight gain in terms of like the mental health aspect as well. I think that that played a bit of a part. And how can I sort of escape some of the stuff that's going on with university, the pressures, you know, and how can I get out and just clear my head? If I'm going to go and do anything. I'd rather go for a run just through doing park run, which was sort of like a discipline, you know, every Saturday morning. Yeah, you could kind of pretty much go and do it and with park run did you find that you were um did you notice yourself improving obviously people take barcodes and get emailed times and whatnot was it a thing did you start to think oh i'm i'm noticeably actually getting a little bit fitter as well yeah yeah definitely so i think like when i started out i was probably running 
like over 30 minutes for a 5k as with many people the time comes off a lot quicker you know at the start of your journey so yeah. you know over time i was sort of going 28 27 26 and then sort of getting down to 25 sort of in in the peak i guess and then it kind of leveled off a little bit so going from the end of university to then moving away for a bit and then getting married all of this stuff that you know all of this life stuff that was going on and then just rediscovering running probably in about 2016 um, which is when the Lincoln Half Marathon came about. Mm. And how does Lincoln Half Marathon come about because that's a fair jump up in distance from doing park runs 5k's and some training runs and stuff and all of a sudden you're running yes I'm going to go and run 13.1 miles was that a a recommendation from a friend how did Lincoln Half Marathon become a goal for you? To provide a bit of context so in that period say from 2014 to 16 I was still running sort of on and off but nothing consistent in any way you know not working towards anything it would just be a response again to weight gain or I've just you know I've not felt very good about myself in terms of physicality or or whatever it is so Mm. Yeah, so in 2016, I was working uh, in marketing for Skoda and Sayat branch in uh, in Lincoln. And um, some of my work colleagues at the time uh, were keen runners. They were part of clubs and, you know, very serious. And I was, I was sort of sitting there thinking, well, you know, I've been running to and from work a bit and, you know, I've been putting in a few miles. And they said, oh, do you fancy doing the Lincoln Half Marathon? I said, well... Yeah, yeah, that sounds all right. I could probably, you know, with a bit of training, I could probably probably do that. And so that was the catalyst. That, that's 2016, which it feels such a long time ago now. You know, know. they're in 20, it's five years ago, 2021. And I think for me personally, since then, I've, I've always needed something to work towards. I don't find it easy to get out of bed in the morning and go for a run without knowing in the back of my mind, you know, I've got this half marathon or... There's a reason. There's a reason to go. Or even like, oh, what, park runs on Saturday. This was my time last time. I want to do better. So how am I going to do that this week? So, so yeah, they said, you know, we're going to enter it. And I paid my money and uh, started doing some training, which as I alluded to, um, included just running from work back to home, uh, which from memory was probably about 7k, but I could kind of do a bit more if I wanted, because we lived in a village just south of Lincoln at the time. So that was really my training. I think I did one long run, um, probably about 18k before the half marathon. So I hadn't actually done the distance. So yeah, uh, yeah. And how was the actual event itself? Did you feel like you did well for how fit you were? Was it like this complete shock to the system? Did you crash at any point? Yeah. So I remember um it started at the Lincolnshire show ground, which is a massive venue. I remember looking at the course map beforehand and there's famous Lincoln landmarks um on the course and came out of the show ground, went down into the university and then sort of back up through the cathedral area back to the showground and at the end they uh, kindly put one of our sort of biggest hills in Lincoln not steep hill but it's called Yarborough Hill and that was kind of let's say roughly it's at kilometer 16 you know so you've you've been running a bit before that and mm. they they dropped this hill and uh, that was probably the hardest bit and I, I must admit you know I, I wasn't prepared for the race to be honest I could have been a lot fitter if I put more effort in but I think from memory, I'd have to look at my stats, but I did it in about two hours, 20 minutes. And that was with walking as well. Yeah. Um, And Yarborough Hill. And Yarborough Hill and, you know, not being as set up for the race as I could have been. So I felt quite proud, but, you know, quite proud at the time of that. And and it was a really good race, really well organized. It was a really good day. And does the running bug bite after that? Is that a a bit Mm. of a a moment where you go, blimey, I really, I enjoyed that. And do you know what? I might want to pursue this a bit more. Yeah, I think so. After that, again, it was carrying on sort of steadily doing runs. I didn't really do any other races after that, I must admit. I kind of just plodded on on my own. If we fast forward to then, let's say, say late 2019 to early 2020, where we're just kind of coming into lockdowns. And, and again, I've been running in between this. So, you know, it's not mm. there's not a massive gap between 2016 and 2019 yeah. or 20. I've been running. But again, I've not really been running for anything in particular. I started to sort of reassess what do I actually want to do with my time? How can I maximize those opportunities to get out and run and to really to train for something? So did your mileage increase a reasonable amount over lockdown? Did you find yourself getting out there a little bit more? I know you cycle as well. So I don't know if it was a, was it a combination of, of those activities? Yeah, I do a lot of cycling. I think cycling has always been my first love. Um, you know, I'd go into Thetford Forest, Sherwood Forest. In terms of running mileage, I would say yes, because I 
run with a good friend from work, helping each other to get out, you know, three or four times a week running during lockdown. We know we work in the same company and so our shifts are quite similar. You know, we'd get out three or four times a week, you know, doing a few 10Ks a week at our peak. We were doing a few 10Ks a week, which was really good and very motivating, actually, because there's that accountability there Mm. of, you know, we're going to meet, we're going to go for a run, we'll go for a coffee afterwards or whatever it is. Or we'll just go and do 10k for our own houses. Don't get me wrong, I do. I really enjoy running on my own because you can kind of set your own pace and. Yeah, it has its own benefits. Absolutely. Yeah, it has its own benefits and listen to what you want. Yeah, it's been very helpful. You and I have discussed previously when we had a catch up about motivation and I myself and many people listening to this are people who not every day is a day where you jump out of bed and feel like going for a run, even though there are things you'll see online that suggest that maybe that is our mindset. We're just constantly motivated to run. And um, you've talked to me, Chris, about having uh, highs and lows and, and dips. For anyone listening, do you know what kind of creates that that feeling of resistance? And do you have any techniques or anything that you've found quite helpful to get you more motivated on those days when you're not really feeling it definitely having something to work towards is a big thing so have a race planned in i know it sounds silly but even if it's just park run on a saturday like like i mentioned already just something to work towards to say actually i'm going to get out a few times this week even if it's just you know a 3k speed session or a couple of 5ks easy pace you know it'll work wonders i think for the weekend also for me personally because we've had lockdown i've really i've wanted to use my time wisely um amongst work and other stuff and when there have been stresses I found mm. that running for me, it's been motivating for me to get out and, and run because I feel even if it is just a short 5k where I've absolutely, you know, crashed it, I've walked half of it, I've just felt awful. At the end of it, I always feel so much better for doing that. So in some ways, that's a motivation for me so that I can process things better. And yeah. our lives are busy. They're complicated. You know, we don't live easy lives. What I've learned is that the more I run, the easier it becomes. Um, and if I make the effort to go out and not necessarily get caught up at the pace that I'm running or the distances that I'm running, you know, I find that so freeing in some ways. Yeah, absolutely. And it does feel like from things you've said during this conversation that you are someone that does better with the motivation when there is a, a light at the end of the tunnel, when there's a, a, a marker that you're aiming for, there's a reason for doing it. Um, and it's funny, different people need different things. And some people really do need that kind of that anchor and that reason. Um, mm. And they almost need to sort of jump straight on and book the next race. So they've got something uh, to, to look forward to. And that's just the different people's approaches. Um, the training plan at the moment, is it just out of interest? Is it going well? Or do you feel like you're fairly on track for the sub two does it feel doable it's a bit tricky because um i I don't think i'll necessarily get to the end of the training plan before the before the half marathon so it's the rutland half marathon in september so i'm kind of relying on sort of a baseline fitness It's, it's going well it's interesting because we talk about dips in motivation and stuff and I would say there's a lot of the population who have such a dip in motivation with running that they just they don't run whereas mm. you are someone who is still constantly going out there and still making an effort to battle the resistance and to get out there and run so you must know deep down at the back of your mind that there are these these huge benefits do you think that it is um as much for you as getting fit as that psychological thing it, like I'm I guess I'm asking what what do you feel you get from running when everything's going well do you think you're just based level of happiness is a little bit higher you feel a little more sort of content with the world i think i enjoy the the physicality of running as well and just being out in the outdoors again that's something that's even when i was younger i was a bit more indoorsy you know i wasn't really kind of into going outdoors you know it wasn't until i was sort of in the mid-teens where i got my first mountain bike and sort of discovered that there was a world out there that could be discovered um, and that sounds so cliche, but actually for a lot long time, I sort of enjoyed spending time indoors. But now I, I just, just want to spend more time, you know, out in the country and cycling is great. And I, I always will love that. But with running, there is it's kind of it's so natural, isn't it? It's more of a sense of completion, connectivity. And I think sometimes people focus a lot on the physical benefits because they see, you know, your body fat percentage going down and you're looking a bit slimmer and stuff because that's the stuff you can see. And it's a huge part of it and shouldn't be ignored. But it's uh, there's a sort of an, there's an internal thing going on that only the runner themselves can uh, understand and be aware of because it's th- their mind, their brain. But it is interesting the sort of the psychological changes that happen as well and just other strains and stresses seem to melt away somewhat it's almost like a defense against other things that they do that are um harder for them and it's sort of a yeah it's 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 kind of fascinating i want to ask you chris future goals and and obviously the big one is is the half marathon and and hopefully breaking that two hour mark do you feel like you mm. want to 
try some more half marathons? Is there any kind of distances? Dare I say it, would you ever consider going and doing a full marathon? Um, do you know over the next five years, kind of roughly what yeah. you'd like to do with some with your running and tick off? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I would like to do a marathon. So my dad, years ago, did the marathon mm. um and so i'd like to think there's some sort of dna in there that i you know that i've adopted from him in terms of running maybe that's where it came from maybe but obviously as you've done a podcast on it, it's so difficult to get into so maybe i should start now applying <laughs> <laughs> and you know you know within maybe 10 20 years i might get into it but yeah there's a few things that i'd like to do so with park run coming back on stream i'd like to get my 5k time down like sub 25 is good and then if i really want to i'll probably maybe try and work towards that 20 mark you know i'm not going to say sub 20 but just sort of closer to 20 than 25 chip away at it yep chip away at that so that's kind of that's something i can do sort of on a weekly basis just focus a bit more on entering some races and so i've recently been going to um lincoln wellington athletics club so my friend that mm. i've been running with um he he's been a member for a long time and so he's been you know asking me do you want to come along and i've been saying oh, i don't really know i feel a bit nervous you know i'm not really up to that sort of standard but actually for the sessions that i've gone gone along to they meet on a tuesday and a thursday night so the tuesday nights are sort of speed sessions and which i really enjoy like there's just something about sort of doing those 800 meter runs and yeah just going full throttle and it's very bizarre actually I, I i probably enjoy those more than the thursday night long runs that they do um which i've only been to a couple but um the tuesday night speed sessions are great yeah so there's the 5k stuff the the half marathon i quite like the the 10 mile distance is quite an interesting one you know that's quite it it's quite a nice sort of distance to do um it's quite easy to get bored with sort of running from your house so maybe just to look at driving out and sort of just parking the car and just running or parking the car running somewhere getting the train back do you know what I mean that sort of thing absolutely yeah that's a big one actually uh, I think it's very easy to fall into a pattern of it's just easy to run from the house and so in cert on certain days it is but I find that sometimes if I just jump in the jog on van I make it yeah. I shouldn't yeah, say yeah. jog on van it sounds so <laughs> cliche if, no, I know I, what you mean. <laughs> if I just jump in <laughs> if I just jump in the van I can just take it yeah five minutes down the road and all of a sudden be in a completely different forest or woodland or just like an mm. access to different roads that I haven't run on for a little while and that can be quite nice to mix it up and sometimes just a, a short ways away you can find something a little bit different it's interesting you mentioned about doing the um things like the 800 meter reps i do a track session usually on a, either a tuesday or a thursday night at the moment and i'm the same it's yeah. like my favorite session of the week i just that kind of that discipline of this is the session you get it done you get to move a little bit quicker than usual and i think it'd be quite interesting for you chris to come back to park run i think you might be surprised having if you do more of these sessions with lincoln wellington athletics club well not a mouthful at all um if you do more <laughs> of these sessions you'll find that uh, you might be like, wow, actually, all of a sudden, going sub 25 doesn't feel quite as ridiculously hard in the lungs as it used to because stuff on the track and stuff doing these reps are tremendous for your fitness. So um, mm. it could be very interesting when Parkrun does return and you have a crack at it just to see where that, that fitness is at again with, with those times. Yeah, it's something to look forward to. I think for a lot of people, it's something that we've missed, isn't it? And we're quite fortunate in Lincoln, there's a couple of park runs now. So there's a new one that started up to the other side of the city, not as flat as the Booton Park run which is the park run um that i mentioned earlier that's a very flat course and there's no hills at all it's you know a very quick course so there's a new one at a place called doddington hall which is sort of a stately home it's got a nice cafe so yeah that, you know if you're, if you're in the area funny enough you say that i was gonna <laughs> one, of the, one of the final suggestions i was gonna make was uh, it would be quite cool at some point when park runs are back on and i've got this kind of uh hope to travel around and do the classic term park run tourism but in, in my case filming yeah, them for the yeah. for the jog on youtube channel it would be quite cool to come and do lincoln park run and maybe even we could do something where we we pace you off the back of some training to try and hit a certain 5k mm. or something that might be, be nice. not not to add more pressure to have a camera in your wow. face as well as <laughs> trying to get a piece TV. but uh, that could be quite a fun quite a fun video you know just to have something every saturday to go and do is, is fantastic you mentioned um briefly about a bit of weight gain and stuff and then that was kind of a little bit of a catalyst or the ignition if you like to think well what can i do to counteract this while well, running might be an interesting option and of course what people quickly realize i mean different for different people and metabolisms and how much running affects them but i'm certainly someone that if i don't change my eating it doesn't matter how much i'm running my weight kind of doesn't really shift but different people are different so i have to kind of you know be a little cautious with the the diet as well how do you how have you found eating and running how has that relationship been for you yeah so i would say uh looking back to sort of the university days where i think we all naturally ate a lot more i always have noticed that if i do have a period where i am snacking a lot it does 
play over into into running and you do notice that you go out on that run and you just feel you don't feel at your best i have noticed that when i am disciplined with my eating that it does transpire into your training it, it does mean you feel better on your runs and there is the weight side of things but i think after a while i've kind of got off that and more and i focus more on actually how is this impacting running? It's something that I'm, I'm learning more about and I want to learn more about. Yes. Um, and, I want, I want, and I want to get better at um, maybe sort of some like strength training and other elements. I can run, let's do a bit of strength training. Let's look at my diet and then let's let's see how that all kind of works together yeah if that makes sense and you're right and it, it does work together and it's kind of it has a cyclical relationship in that it can it can spiral up or it can spiral down if you don't go for that run then you think well what's the point you get the takeaway and then you have the takeaway so you're like well i'm not gonna go for that run because i don't feel very good and you can you can yeah. just generally they can have a bad break but if you get it going the other way and kind of um helicoptering up if you like and it kind of it's, it becomes this kind of positive spiral where because you ate better then you feel a bit better on the run you push a little hard on the run then you've still got that sort of like soreness in your legs so it reminds you when you go to eat you're like oh yeah i'm, I'm fit i'm running at the moment you know i'll make a slightly healthier choice and it and they can bounce mm. off of each other and next thing before you know it you're a couple of kilograms down and you're running a slightly better park run time or whatever it is uh, i know food and running is a weird discussion and there it's uh, it can be a, a touchy subject as well because there's a lot of people out there who struggle both ways uh with far too many calories and also people who are even more dangerous one when you start to restrict food and it becomes a really unhealthy relationship and you see that a lot more in the uh, elite levels um uh, when i've been around a bit you can you start to see you hear a, a lot of people having a lot of stories of uh, controlling the food and trying to be as light as possible and that can get dodgy but I think you're right I think that's a that's a nice that kind of ties in with future goals as well absolutely I think strength training as well you may have picked up on points from stuff I put out that I'm quite interested in strength training I'd like to um, hopefully put some more content out around it because I find it quite a fascinating subject and, and how it, they can complement each other so I think those are some nice goals to have I didn't want to say Harry but you kind of inspired me with your you know your videos of your kettlebell workout <laughs> <laughs> so I, I feel like if, if Harry's doing it, I must do it. <laughs> I have a bit of a background with doing a bit more gym stuff. I agree with you, though, in that the gym became like this slightly sort of boring kind of stand here, do leg day, go over here, oh, do it chest was, day. It was boring. It was totally mm. boring. And I didn't actually feel, for me myself, I did not see any benefit really, personally. It wasn't until I started running, again, looking at the physicality and the aesthetics, mm. that's when it changed for me. It was running. But, but now I've not plateaued, but I have in some ways. Yeah, so yeah. I think that I need to add in a bit of strength training to maybe take the body in a different direction it depends whatever works for you i i, I mean if a gym membership works for people then brilliant i think gym membership you really have to be sure that you can go and it's worth it um mm. for me just having bought a kettlebell i still go to the gym every once in a while but the um yeah watching some uh, there's a great guy on youtube called mark wildman who teaches you all about kettlebell movements and that for me has been enough to just uh, really change the way i think about fitness and i did crossfit three years so that introduced me to kind of functional fitness and using your body weight for a lot of stuff um, and a little, bit, a little bit of olympic weightlifting and a bit of gymnastics and stuff you can get really caught up in it so i try to keep it at a minimal level now and just do things that's going to benefit the the running so just kind of focusing on core and legs and then a little bit of upper body as well that's good that you're you're interested and i think it's a yeah it's a fascinating area to to explore the only thing, closing thing i would say is that with running there is this sort of you know in this consumeristic world that we live in and we're all guilty myself especially there's a purity with running that actually yes you need some equipment but it's free to go out and run on the trails. It's free to run wherever you want. You need some shorts and a t-shirt, some decent shoes. and Otherwise you get arrested, yeah. Otherwise you get arrested. <laughs> uh, and you can go and do what you want. So there's a purity in that. that actually, you don't need a lot but you can gain so much. That's a great summary. Uh, purity is a great word uh, for describing it. It is a very pure activity. Sorry, it sounds a bit biblical. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> I didn't mean to be like that. Right, it's to run out. <laughs> at the end, you, get, you just go super biblical. <laughs> no, I didn't mean to. No, um, yeah, sorry, go on. No, no, that's no, that's perfect. No, I think you're absolutely right. In, in a weird way, sometimes I feel like that's kind of just the overall message of jog on, and it always kind of comes back to the, at the end of the day. It's just kind of suggesting that maybe running is a, a good use of your time, however you choose else to spend the rest of 99% of your life. But maybe that 1% of your time could be taken up with trying some running because it is, I and so many others get so much from it because it kind of taps into this this biological thing and this thing that we are actually quite good at and more a lot better yeah, than we yeah. give ourselves yeah. credit for and is more natural to us 
worse than maybe we realize. Well, Chris, it's been fascinating talking to you. Um, I hope at some point when I'm up north touring around, I can uh, come and meet up with you and we'll do maybe a, a Lincoln Park run and a coffee or something, or even if it's not a Saturday, go for a run in general. Um, and it's been really fascinating to hear about your journey. And particularly from that angle of, I think there's a lot of relatability there of it isn't something that is like from day one, you were just in love with running and that was a, a process for you and you've sort of slowly been, and I think it's still an ongoing process. You're still young, late twenties and you know, we've, you and I have both got uh, many years of healthy running ahead of us if we want it. So um, just thank you for coming on and it's been great to talk to you. Pleasure. Thanks for having me, Harry. If you'd like to support the podcast and videos, you can buy a Jog On running top by going to thisisjogon.com or emailing us with a size request to thisisjogon at gmail.com. I'm Harry Morgan. Go for that run. And this is Jog On. (laughs) 